Hello, we're now going to talk a little bit about some of the overarching pros and cons of being connected up to networks like the internet and really, you know, sharing information and accessing information across yeah, the world via the internet. So let's look at this in terms of individual people and organizations and look at the advantages and disadvantages for each of those two groups. So for us individuals, having access to systems like the internet mean the following things, they give the following advantages. Well, first of all, communication is so much easier through something like the internet. It can be done long distance. You can contact somebody across the entire world really quickly and really easily via the internet. Right, we know the networks are really fast. We can use products like Zoom and other web conferencing platforms to speak to people. Even things like email might seem quite basic for many of us, but they're still remarkable. It can be done so quickly. In the past, we'd have to do it by post or by traveling, which are slow. Another advantage is the amount of information available for free and easily available to us at any time of day. So if you are, say, researching something, you've got lots of resources available to you, even something like Wikipedia, you might take it for granted, but it's quite impressive that you can access pretty much any topic and view information on it. Not always perfect information, of course. We have things like fake news, and inaccurate sources, but still it's a big amount of information which before the internet or without the internet, we wouldn't have access to. Another big advantage is services are usually available 24 seven. It's rare to come across a website which you know shuts down at nighttime or at weekends, right? It's available all the time. And so we are able to access things no matter the time of day, no matter the time zone and access things remotely in many cases. So those are some key advantages for individual people. I hope you can think of some more, but it's good to go into an exam with a few set ones, which is what I'm trying to give you in this video. So don't be afraid if you've got other ones, I'm sure they're great as well. For organizations, so at a slightly bigger scale, looking at an entire organization, well, advantages of networks like the internet is information can be shared widely, easily and quickly across the entire world. So you're not confined to just your immediate location, you can share information worldwide easily. Which leads to it being a global audience. You can potentially target other areas of the world you wouldn't be able to do without the internet. So if you're able to uh, manage people or have customers across the world, this may lead to increased revenue and allow people to buy stuff from other countries which might help your business. You can also hire people worldwide. If you're willing to have people work remotely, you can get the best and brightest of people around the world, not just located in your surrounding areas. And really a flip side of a point I made before about individuals, because you can provide services 24 seven, you're not limited by what you might call working hours. If it was a physical shop, you might have to close at certain points, but keeping a website up may mean anyone can access it 24-7 and so you can work 24-7 and make money 24-7. But clearly there are some issues with connecting up to something like the internet. Let's look at some individual disadvantages first of all. So for cost, the internet is free to use in a sense, but ultimately you've got to connect up to it and you've got to pay a company like an internet service provider to use the internet. So you might pay you know, 30 quid a month for your internet, which is what I pay. Uh, that happens all the time, every month. It's an ongoing cost. Also, once you're on the internet, you might, as a, as a person, feel pressured to use certain services. That could be peer pressure. It could be because you've got an expectation from work. So social media might be an example of where you might not particularly want to use it, but because everyone's using it, you might feel you have to, which is obviously can, might make you feel negative. And the fact that the internet is 24 seven, might lead to you feeling like you're always on, always on the internet, always on your comp devices. It can be hard to switch off. Often the internet services are designed to be quite addictive and that can be quite exhausting and might harm someone's mental health, for example. And a big one is the fact that you, once you are connected to a global network, that means anyone from around the world could try and target you. So if there is potential for data loss, you could get hacked. You could get things, things could get deleted by mistake. And if you got hacked, say, that might lead to identity theft, where maybe you get scammed, somebody steals your details and uses it to buy products or sign up for stuff 
things which are negative. If you are not connected to a network, that means you can't get hacked, right? Now, for organizations similar, to be honest, starting with cyber attacks as well. So, of course, at an organizational level, you are also vulnerable to being attacked by hackers or other cyber criminals, which could damage your systems, costing a lot of money, but also lead to data loss, which could lead to you getting sued, could lead to you getting fined, can massively affect your reputation and ability to make money. So, again, if you are very isolated and weren't connected at all, that's not possible. So it's a risk everyone um, on the internet signs up to, to an extent, I suppose. And there is, again, this ongoing cost of maintaining the services. It's not a one-off cost ever. You're always paying for it over time. You know, things like paying server costs. So, you know, when you're renting servers or have electricity costs, many small and medium organizations won't actually have their own servers or just rent them. But if they do own their own servers, they take up a lot of energy, uh, need air conditioning and cooling, it's, it's a lot. So that is quite expensive. And to mitigate against cyber attacks, to protect against cyber attacks, you've got to have security. That can also be very expensive. And there's an ongoing cost as well. Another ongoing cost might be paying for domain names. So reserving your website name is important for many businesses and costs money every year usually, every couple of years. And especially if you are a bigger company, you've got to pay for IT staff. You might have dedicated staff for maintaining the servers for security, which adds up and is expensive.